quite struck by what you said about uh, being the SEP school and the, um, the inclusiveness issue with the Malays and the Indians and all that. Uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit more on that? Do you feel we're not a very inclusive society right now? Uh, and what can be done to um, uh, alleviate that? I think in terms of the SEP school thing, um, people will view, the, the minorities will view people from SEP schools as uh, Chinese chauvinists, which is, may not be true. And I, I have uh, specially made my effort actually get close to Malays and the Indians, you know. But for a lot of people on my court, I, 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 don't, I don't think they really make such effort. And that will be a di di uh, divide within the elites. I think that is very unhealthy. Yeah, we, ha we have to be inclusive in, in terms of uh, nation building, especially on the, the people who are supposed to be the leaders of the country, you know from all aspects, political, economics, you know, or, or else we might end up with a certain grievances, there will be an underlying pressure for the society stability in that sense. So I would urge to rethink about this SEP school situation. Yeah. So underlying that would be the need for more diversity and for more different points of view and, and different people to be represented in the mainstream, perhaps. Would you like to talk a little bit about the candidates? I think you mentioned a few that you pointed out. So can you tell us a little bit about, about them? Okay, um, I'm, I'm actually um, an orthodox person. <laughs> I've got a few two Malays in my team, or four, and two Chinese-speaking candidates, including me. Right. This is by virtue of the, um, the population uh, profiling that we did on Cha Chu Kang. It is a very Chinese ground, but at the same time, it is also a very Malay ground. But somehow, we feel that when we walk the ground, a large part of the Chinese voters only speak Chinese. That we do not want that type of situation, just like the SEP school. So with a team like that, we actually bridge, do the bridging of understanding between the different um, ethnic group. You know? That's our strategy for the moment. I can review. All right? <laughs> yeah. What is the first thing you will do if you are elected? First thing I will do if I am elected? I will be very busy with the town council thing. <laughs> that's, that's granted. <clears throat> but having said that, as an MP, I see my primary job not as a town councillor or as a state manager. It's a policy views that we have to bring to the table in Parliament. And the first thing we would do is to address the diversi diversiveness of the society with a ratio. And of course, as I said, the separation of powers. We may not change PAP's mind to actually give itself a separation of power, no? But we just keep hammering it, you know, until the day we become a government. That may not be my time, yeah, you know, but we will start the legacy which is uh, beyond LKY. Yeah, yeah. Just one last question. Yes. Um, why did you pick Chua Chu Kang? I, I know you said you did the walk on the ground and you found the, the, the population uh, uh, demographic was such, but did you survey the whole of Singapore and decide that was the best uh, constituency or I'm just trying to go behind your thought process and, and find out yeah I think PAP thought that GRC is good for them because they have a strong anchor as minister to bring other people in I think otherwise I'm unorthodox I think the minister will be a liability you know, because of their policies which affect a lot of people inclusive voters within the uh, within the constituencies. He is not just an MP, but a policy maker. I think healthcare, we, we, it is about time that we need a robust debate about the healthcare issue. And I hope, I say again, I'm inviting Mr. Gam Ging Yong to open debate, just like this, uh, on healthcare. No? Yeah, right, thank you. <laughs>